Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, Marketing Masterclass um, webinar. In this episode, we are going to be looking at raising brand awareness um, with a BRIBA CPD. Um, I've got a host of panelists joining me who we'll, we'll introduce in a moment. Um, but just to give you a, a quick sort of introduction as to um, who MBS are and, and what the synopsis of this webinar is going to be. Um, MBS for the past 50 years um, has been a construction technology platform. Um, we connect architects, designers, contractors, um, and manufacturers um, in the aim of providing clear structured product data and more informed specifications. Um, obviously, we have all now been in a lockdown situation for the past year and a half. And um, as we entered the lockdown sort of 3.0, as, as we're doing it, um, remote and online CPD materials continued and, and sort of become more and more prevalent and, and vital, really, um, to architects and specifiers and, and any designer, really, in particular, to uh, achieve their CPD credits. Um, Obviously, this remains an opportunity for manufacturers, um, and they need to continue to raise the awareness of the brand and products, um, even when they potentially might not be working on construction projects or importantly, when they can't actually be visiting these clients face to face. So hopefully we're going to um, cover some of this topic today and, and discuss how uh, CPD can help you um, to raise that awareness. OK, so just for some um, little bits of etiquette, we have all microphones muted for the attendees. Um, this is just to improve the quality of the recording on the webinar. Um, if anybody would like to submit some questions, we're going to have roughly an hour of, of talk and discussion on the CPD webinar. Um, but then we're going to open this up to questions from the audience. If I could ask for those to be answered in the Q&A section and not in the chat, um, just so we have one um, stream to actually manage those questions, we will aim to get around to answering most of those um, as, as possible. If we don't get around to answering your question today, um, we will, however, follow these up um, privately by email after the call. So um, please bear with us and hopefully we'll, we'll get around to you as well. So just to do the introductions, uh, my name's Lee Jones. I'm the head of Manufacturing Solutions at MBS. Um, I'm responsible for a, a host of different things um, with the MBS, but particularly involving manufacturers, helping them to understand digital technology and how they can raise their awareness, um, as well as internal processes from development and production, etc. Uh, previously had 20 years experience plus in the manufacturing sector. Um, so I was one of you guys for a, a good couple of decades, um, but I've now been with MBS for the past two and a half years um, and I'm hoping to help make a difference to, to manufacturers out there. Um, joining me today I have four uh, colleagues and I'd like to firstly introduce um, the first one of those and it's Joni Tyler. Joni could you introduce yourself please? Hi Lee thank you thank you everyone for joining today and I hope we're all safe and well and looking forward to a gradual return to a mix of digital and live um, working. Um, I have been head of CPD at the RABA for more than 20 years and I'm responsible for CPD policy, strategy, compliance, accreditation, and um, curriculum. But the biggest part of my role is working with our colleagues at NBS, like Lee and many others, to deliver the RIBA CPD Providers Network, which we're going to be talking about quite a lot today. And that's our CPD accreditation service, which hooks up manufacturers like you with a story to tell and a product to to um, promote um, and a, a brand to raise awareness of with um, specifiers of all kinds. So we have a big team at RIBA and a big team at NBS who work together to deliver um, the support, the, the events, the marketing, and, and most importantly, the uh, accreditation of your CPD material, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Thank you very much, Joni. Um, our next guest is Kay Porter. Um, Kay, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, thanks, Lee. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Kay Porter, um, Managing Director of Smart Marketing Works, and we're basically a full service marketing agency um, working within the construction sector and specialising in building products. Um, we particularly get involved with the REBA CPD network um, providers by offering um, writing of CPD and um, basically taking them through from concept through to working with Joni and Joni's team on um, their assessments, etc. And we've been fortunate enough to work with Joni for, for over a decade now. Um, so we've got a, a strong awareness of the importance of educational content within a REBA branded CPD. Perfect. Thanks very much, Kay. Um, and then next, we've got Joanna Wilmot um, from Think Tank. Joanna, could you uh, introduce yourself, please? Hi, thanks, Lee. Um, 
I'm Jo Wilmot. I run the PR team at the Think Tank. Um, for those of you who don't know us, we're an integrated marketing agency that's been going for 28 years. Um, we have quite a substantial construction practice within the agency, and um, many, many of our clients are very keen advocates of the CPD offered by um, RIBA. You know, they find it an incredibly powerful way of reaching their specifier audiences. Thanks very much, Joe. And then last but not least, um, we've got Eva joining us. Eva, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure, thanks, Lee. Um, my name is Eva Wood. I am the founder of Edify Content Studio. Um, we're a, a content creation agency, and we work with interior product and building product brands. Uh, and we develop content from, from blogs, um, white papers, technical resources, and CBD programs. Um, I'm a director of the British Institute of Interior Design and previously to starting the agency, I was similar to you, Lee, um, also uh, uh, in the manufacturing, on the manufacturing side of things, heading up a specification marketing team. So I'm also, well, I have been one of you previously as well. Thank you very much, Eva. Um, so yeah, so we, we've got a host of different experience with us today. Um, so hopefully you're going to find it useful. And without further ado, I think we should we should start the conversation. Um, so for anybody joining us that, that might be um, new to this type of thing, or, or just generally so we can set some benchmarking, because I know this topic has a lot of different opinions and understanding of what it is. I think firstly, it'd be nice to um, sort of discuss what is brand awareness and, and why it's important. Um, Joni, I think we'll come to you on how CPD fits in that later. But if we could put this out to um to Kay um Joe Joe and Eva um I think that'd be that'd be great if we could get some discussion going around that please right, yeah Kay, Kay yeah go for it yeah please <laughs> okay so I mean I think importantly brand awareness is is about being having brand recall and being front of mind um as soon as something pops into play such as a specific category for instance, that you want your brand to be one of the, the ones that's, that's memorable. Um, and a lot of what marketing about really is, is, um, is making sure that that happens, that you know, there is a regular drip feed of, of brand, whether that be through thought leadership, which we're gonna go, go on to talk about, or whether it's just through making sure that you're getting the brand values and the way that, um, your positioning right within within a certain category. Um, if we look at, you know, for example, if you look at um, the architects and specifiers market, you know, we think we're having a little conversation pri just prior to going live and saying, well, it's gr it's great because a number of brands are functioning in this in this um, arena. So straight off, as soon as we thought about this sort of sector, then Reba and MBS are, are obviously brands that spring to mind and roll off the tongue and that's that's really what it's what it's to me that's what it's all about it's about the positioning and the recall being front of mind first first voice there so sure, I'm, I'm sure joe will, will pitch in a, um also on yeah that. yeah joe, i yeah. think i think that that leads that quite nicely to joe to to, to maybe um form a response yeah. okay. i mean um you know the reason sort of very much building on what case just said there um the reason why we invest loads of money in marketing is to make our brands that we work with you know familiar and you know the more familiar you are the more likely you are to be chosen and you know there is a sort of wide range of ways of doing that and um you know cpd is a great way it's not a direct you know sales message but it's a really really important part of the toolkit and you know, the more famous you are, uh, the more salient you are, the easier you come to mind, and the more confident people will be in um, making the choice for your brand. And I'm sure Eva has some, you know, additional thoughts as well. Yeah, sure. I, I was going to say also that I think it's very important within our sector because our clients, or the, the, the specifiers and the architects, are very, very very busy um, and I often hear from from specification or, or business development managers saying that architects they they don't need you until they need you um, so I think it's very important to be somewhere in in their mind because when they do come to specify or, or looking at the products or the solution that you're offering you need to pop into their into their mind um, so so I think also to be aware of the fact that architects do get a lot of marketing um, I don't know if I should use the word bombarded, but they do have a lot of marketing coming at them. So, so it's important to, to raise brand awareness in order to, to be there when, when they need you. 
kind of thing. Sure. So I think, yeah, that, that whole sort of thought leadership piece and showing your, your technical ability as well as your, your partnership ability with, with the um, specifier is, is key as well as just obviously the marketing side of things that might be with advertisements, et cetera. Um, I think looking at other sectors, I think the holy grail of brand awareness is probably something like Coke or Hoover where people refer to whoever's product it is as, as that particular brand. Um, and I think in, in our industry, obviously, it's a little bit more difficult than that. But um, there are things we can do, such as CPD, to, to increase that awareness. Awareness. I think on that note, Joni, it'd probably be a good <laughs> time to explain what CPD is for anybody that might not know or for, for those that are experienced with it, just to get that um, inside opinion yeah. from, from the RIBA, please. Sure. Well, really, um, what is CPD really has three quick answers, or rather, it's a three-part answer. So the first one is requirement to most professionals anywhere in the world have in any sector, and not just in construction, to maintain their competence to practice. Um, their profession by way of regular structured or informal learning and this is usually going to be an obligation outlined in the professional bodies code of professional conduct as it is at the riba for our chartered members so fundamentally cpd um, has grown up in the last 20 25 years and it's about um, ensuring safe practice and the protection of the public the protection of clients protection of users of the built envir environment and protection of you as an architect or other construction professional and, and your business. At the RIBA, it's been required for more than 20 years now. Um, every professional body has a different approach. The RIBA's approach is fairly complex and at the heart of it is 10 mandatory CPD topics. Every member has to do every year at least two hours of CPD and to ensure they maintain their basic skills to practice as architects. And of course, having to do that CPD, they're looking for a way to, uh, having to do the CPD, they're looking for ways in which to comply. So they're looking for CPD content. So the next um, part of the answer is that CPD is the learning itself, the learning itself that's provided um, or procured to give people a way to maintain their competence by way of that learning. So whether it's a half hour piece of micro learning, like um, a free um, half hour q and I did the other day on personal health and safety, or it's a four day course or anything in between, it's the content itself. Most commonly for members of the CPD providers network, whether manufacturers, trade associations, or suppliers, it's the 40 minute in-house or these days live digital PowerPoint presentation. But for manufacturers and for CPD providers and network, it could be a factory tour. Um, it could be a, a virtual factory tour, it could be guidance document, reading, a blog, podcast, any kind of online learning, and any way in which um, human beings, uh, human adults can learn and enhance their competence can count as CPD, and moreover can be delivered as CPD by um, manufacturers. And finally, CPD is you, it's you, it's your content, and it's a way in which to reach specifiers about your product and the awareness of your brand. So it's in an assessed, educa in an assessed educational way. It, it's a way also to achieve your goals, whether it's brand awareness, marketing, your business goals, or educational goals, or sales, specification sales and return on investment ROI. And that's what the CPD Providers Network has always been about. As a CPD provider, um, you are able to offer REBA accredited CPD, putting you in an exclusive advantageous position, helping people to find their CPD, but at the same time initiating those long-term relationships between you and your specifiers and your target audiences. So CPD does a lot of things and it's really important not only to RIBA members, but other um, built environment professionals too. Good. Thanks very much, Jerry. And obviously, um, in the situation with, with the lockdown, I think just, just a little add on, there's still that demand there for the CPD. Um, it's just obviously being delivered delivered remotely now through through platforms such as such as this. So um, it, there's still a lot of engagement. I think obviously that the key point there, I think, Joni, that I, that I took from this is that it's about that continual learning it, it's mm -hmm. it, it needs to be something that's educational and i think that really ties into the thought leadership piece from a manufacturer's point of view um i think just opening up to the panel can, can we just maybe discuss a little bit around what thought leadership is and and how this fits into um raising brand awareness in, in particular um don't mind who would like to go for this first if anybody wants to jump in just just feel free um yeah, Eva. Yep, sure. Yeah, because yeah, we talk a lot about um, thought leadership with our clients, and 
um, we often say that it's it's really about looking outwards, perhaps compared to more traditional forms of marketing. So rather than looking at you and your product offering purely, looking at your product off offering, it's more about looking out and, and trying to understand the context and the wider um, the wider context in where you fit as a company and where your offering fits, and trying to own that space and and talk about. Um, or be the leader really in in uh, in in that area, yeah. and talk about subjects and themes that are relevant and related to what you do and what you offer. So it's it's a slightly more outward looking approach, I would say, mm -hmm. um, and thinking more about the audience. So what would what does the audience need? Um, mm -hmm. what do they want to hear that is related to you and your products and your offering, rather than what do I want to say um, about my products. I, I would say that's the yeah. difference, perhaps, between thought leadership and and non thought sure. leadership. <laughs> yeah, I sorry. think it's also. Oh, sorry, Lee. Sorry, it's okay, Joni. Please, please go ahead. Well, I think it's also about um, thinking about what you do in in a more discursive and lateral sense as well. You know, thinking about what are the bigger issues that we can tie our brand into and our product into. So, in the providers network, we've been certainly seeing a cautious toe dipping into manufacturing's offering CPD, and the turn and form of thought leadership as opposed to, or rather as in addition to the technical specification CPD they usually do. So this could be CPD that peripherally focuses on issues in relations to, but not directly about a product. So a good example would be a um, tile company doing a seminar on color psychology, which is really, you know, fairly common one, or a, um, a paving company who have a blog on issues on the urban realm and psychogeography in which the product is never mentioned at all but which makes important points about how the product is the is used ultimately or it could be a podcast on lighting design from on in a museum um, project from a luminaire manufacturers so i guess in other words you could say it's um, didactic or or exploratory or academic or sort of sideways looking and manufacturers, you probably all have content of that sort on your websites or in your um, printed material that you could turn into um, a really effective and interesting um, and eye-catching piece of CPD to distinguish it from this technical CPD that you're probably already doing as well. It, it not only um, gives you another chance to use your CPD assessments, if you're part of the providers network, but it gives something that that piques people's interest to think, ah, oh, you know, I could, this is something I've not encountered before. And this is really going to be something that would be um, quite enjoyable to listen to. And I, I'd learned something and, you know, um, uh, on the wider context of architecture as well. Sure. Thanks, Jane. I think that that's something from experience as a manufacturer in various different companies that have all delivered CPD. I think a lot of people try to pigeonhole their CPDs just around mm -hmm. the technical nature of the product and put it into the 10th part of the curriculum. Um, for anybody that, that's not aware, the RIBA um, CPD core curriculum is made up of 10 sectors, um, 10 being the technical um, sort of stage, which does fit very well to construction products, but the rest of the other nine categories um, tend to not be as highly um, sort of dense with regards to material. Um, but it is a great opportunity there for um, you as a manufacturer to actually do something that is going to intrigue the specifier and make them think, actually, yeah, I would really love to listen mm -hmm. to that. Um, so yeah, great, great suggestion there, Joni, on, on how people could look at that. Kay, obviously, you work with many manufacturers doing this and have done um, alongside the RIBA for 10 years. Um, what's what's your experience and thoughts on, on this from that, that yeah. point of view? Well, I think mirroring pretty much what, what Joni and Neighbor have, have said so far, um, to me, thought leadership is more about positioning of the, the actual brand as a, a leading authority in their sector or their category. It's not about a product sale, it's, you know, that's further down the, the funnel as it were. Um, and it's, it's about being expert or being perceived to be an expert in a certain, certain area and encouraging engagement um, so that what you've got to say is interesting and, and relevant to the, the audience that you're, you're targeting and and basically you know that that is probably more to do with the um type of content and in particular within a cpd that's that's um very much um 
important because she, the, the architects are, and specifiers are giving up their time to um, also have chosen that particular brand CPD. They want to know that they're going to come away with, um, with some good thoughts and um, actually it's a learning outcome rather than a, a product sell. And I think that that's certainly something that being as associated with the um, Reba CPD Providers Network will um, is really where the, the architects benefit in that, that area. So it is all about thought leadership and being being relevant. And um, I know, Joe, you do quite a lot of, of, of work in supporting that as well through through PR as well to specify. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, just underlying that ex expertise aspect, um, I think that's so, so, so important. And then the other point is around thinking editorially you know it has as Kay said it has to be interesting people want you know they have such fractured attention spans especially at the moment um you've just got to capture their imaginations and stay with it and then really um reflecting about what Eva said that empathy understanding your audience and the challenges they they're facing and what they need to see and if you you know if you do all those things people will definitely attend your CPD and really really engage and then, you know, it's about taking that CPD content further and sort of working it really, really hard across, you know, all the other marketing channels, um, because obviously it's a significant investment for any manufacturer. Um, you don't want to just leave it um, in the CPD, you want to take it out and get more value from it, really. And I know that both Kay and Eva do a lot of um, that, don't, they? don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you need to be able to repurpose that content um, across your digital channels, blogs, web, webinar, um, however that may, may be. Once you've actually created the content, um, as, as Ava will also um, reassure, it's the, you get more bang for your bucks, really, in, in how you use that afterwards. So make, make the most out of it. I just wanted to add, I think one term that we often use when we talk about thought leadership in, in relation to CPDs is um, to become a trusted advisor, that it, it helps <laughs> you as a, well, as a team or as a, as a salesperson to become that trusted advisor. And, and you can't really be a trusted advisor without understanding the audience and without bringing something educational. So I think if you're successful, then that's what, that's the result. <laughs> Sure. I think it it's, goes without saying anybody that that's involved in either manufacturing or, or, or vending products, regardless of the sector, it's um, if it's of a complicated nature in particular, if you can show that you know that area, that subject mm -hmm. in the best way possible, um, irrespective of, I suppose, the product itself, it, it, that tends to speak more volumes and people will be more inclined to do business with you on that on that nature. It's about um, credibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Establishing credibility. credibility for you, your brand and your product. And I just say, that um Eva, is it okay all right if I mention the um Zaha Hadid gallery tour yeah or would you yeah, like to mention it it's probably better for you too well uh, yeah I didn't I didn't mention before I used to work for for Rocker um and head up the Rocker London gallery um I think there might be um um people from Rocker watching so hello um but yeah Joni go ahead and 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 say what you wanted to say the Rocker London gallery was designed by Saha Hadid architects and that's what Joni was um referring to it's a showroom uh, and an event space and 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 Rocker developed a um Reba credited tour of the space as well, which of course is an amazing space to see it. And I've got some amazing photos on Instagram, but um, for people to actually get inside a Zaha Hadid space in London and to see it in the context with the products that are on display as well, and to hear a little bit of the history, I, I call that a little piece of thought leadership at the same time as being enjoyable and fun and something that's out of the ordinary, but also gets people out of their offices. I think at the moment they're doing it virtually, but I think hopefully one day before too long, we'll be back to these sorts of, I should parenthetically say, it's always, I think for now on, it's gonna be a mix of digital and face-to-face -face forever. And that's gonna be a good thing. But I think that soon, hopefully people will be getting back into the gallery and other spaces. So, you know, think about those sorts of things as well, when you're looking around at your assets and resources and, and what you can repurpose into uh, a piece of interesting CPD. I think that's that's sort of a, a great point there. And Kay alluded to the same thing, just as, as repurposing of material. Um, obviously, CPD 
um, creation can it can take up some time to, to create and get and get correct but you could repurpose what you already have to produce the cpd but you could also repurpose the cpd to produce other content so as, as you say um i think it was k or joe i can't remember you mentioned getting the, the a bigger bang for your book than, than you might have imagined um repurposing things on your website emails mm -hmm. etc it's it's um it's really invaluable the, the amount of sort of educational material that, that you can produce as well as being able to market the products along alongside that as well um i think on that note it, it probably be a good time to to discuss how we could um actually raise brand awareness using cpd i know we've alluded to to most of it there but if we could sort of try and narrow it down as to this is cpd and this is how it, it will actually um function in, in raising your brand awareness um i think i'd like to open that question to everybody um Joni, i don't know if you wanted to, to start that one perhaps um obviously being being from the cpd providers um network yourself well, I think I'd rather hear from the other three because I think they'll yeah. probably have more to say. But I think the the one thing I would say is that um, there's probably a, a, a conception out there that um, well, Reba CPD, um, Reba Credit CPD is supposed to be non-commercial and generic. It it's also supposed to be about your your product and it's supposed to be about raising awareness of of your brand and your product. So the case histories that you show. Um, and the examples that you show should should be from installations th that your company has been involved in. So it's a perfect place to to um, convey the message and, and to tell your story within the requirements that the RIBA have set out, which I can probably talk about in a little bit. So CPD has always been at heart a function of uh, marketing and sales and brand just 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 turned into a piece of technical CPD that will lead to safe and, and um, informed specifications. But I think the other three probably have greater insights than I do on that. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Joni. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kay, yeah. do you want to go next? Yeah, can... <laughs> See, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, what I'd say is very much about echoing um, Joni's side, that it is about building it trust, confidence, um, awareness, but also it's about getting that balance right, that the, 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 it's not purely, um, Reba CPD doesn't say that you can never ever mention the, the company or, or the brand, it's about the fact that it, it needs to be the right sort of balance, there's certain areas where it's appropriate, maybe in the introduction and um, the case studies endorse the fact that you have the ability, the know-how, that you're an expert, etc. But the, the bulk of it is is really about saying, you know, this this education has to be right. Um, and I think the that with um, you know the premium brands that are operating in within the specification and, and built environment, then um, to be associated and, and to sit within that Reba format is is really a, a uh, given that it's endorsed the fact that the information that they're giving is is correct and I think that that particularly brand um, building within CPD there's sort of no better thing than having an independent organization sort of rubber stamp that that um, that particular brand is in their capability that they know what they're talking about that they're a leading authority in their sector and I think that the Reba stamp sort of uh, re-endorses re that and, and puts them firmly in that, that position, no matter whether it's a particular product sale at that point, the product sale is probably going to come further along the line, basically. Sure, I think there's a lot of focus um, on every aspect with manufacturing at the moment on, on third party accreditation. Like as you just mentioned, Kay, um, we were only discussing just before the webinar went live about the need for third party certificates to prove sort of testing, et cetera, within, within manufacturers. And I think that the learning content is, is no different. If, if it's accredited by somebody as, as highly reputable as the RIBA, it, it's obviously going to be more trusted. And Joni, um, obviously, I, I know the answer to this, but obviously it alludes to a double point system um, mm -hmm. with, with the accreditation. I know this is a question that we get asked time and time again, and it's probably popped up in the, in the Q&A already. <laughs> But, uh, it has explained a little up bit in, about that. It has popped up in Q and A. Um, for now, uh, for a very long time, and, and for now, for the foreseeable future, anything that is accredited by or comes from the RIBA can count for double points. So, architects 
have to attain in it um, both 35 hours per year. So hours of straightforward, straightforward inputs and 100 points. The points relate entirely to how the, what the architect got out of the activity, how it enhanced their professional development. So for now, um, anything that comes from the RIBA, the architects can double point, um, whether that's our own CPD that they pay for or providers network CPD or anything else that comes from us. Um, you can't double the hours, obviously, you can double the points. But in the talk about the RIBA's way ahead with the new competency framework uh, that's arisen as a result of, of the Grenfell Tower fire and other indicators, we're looking at going into a system of capturing outputs and, and reflection and learning. That's probably not going to go anywhere for a very long time, but it's something that we're looking at to, to make sure that learning is actually embedded. As for you as a CPD provider, you don't really need to do anything. You just need to be aware that one, the architect puts it on his or her electronic CPD record, they'll, they'll double the points. You don't assign them, um, they assign them themselves, but you, that, that it is a benefit you need to be aware of. Great, thanks. Um, Joe, obviously, I've, I've, we, we've not come to yourself for, for a little while. So um, on, on raising the brand awareness with CPD, what, what are your um, sort of views and experience with that? Well, I'd suggest that if you're doing CPD with RIBI, you need to tell people about it. So um, make, make sure that it's on all your channels, it's on your website, you're linking back to it, um, you're putting it on social, um, perhaps you're creating a bit of, of buzz around it if you're doing it as a sort of live event, if you're um, you know, making sure you've had links to it after the fact, um, making sure you've got the logos on your um, email signatures, you know, just make sure you really celebrate that. That's, you know, that is quite a passive way, but it is quite a very useful way to sort of underline um, both the, this is the fact that you're doing CPD, you're investing in the community, but also the fact that you're being, it's sort of, you're linked with RIBA and that your content reaches that high standard. Um, beyond that, um, you know, we've talked earlier about repurposing, but taking those themes that you explore in your CPD and making sure you further build on that thought leadership. So the way that I'd naturally do, because I'm PR, is I'd naturally use um, traditional media channels. So, you know, perhaps there could be space within um, specifier media. So um, RIBA journal, AJ, um, you know, talking about these topics, exploring them in further detail, you know, because we also, with a thought leadership strategy, we only advise people to, to take that strategy if you're truly an expert. If it's not a topic you know nothing about, that this strategy won't work and it will just fall flat. Um, but, you know, it's just about consistency, positioning, um, and then, repetition and you know making sure you tell people and yeah. part of that don't forget to use social um yeah really use social to talk about your cpd what you've got available when people can book onto your cpd um to pose questions um linkedin obviously um twitter and and depending on the kind of product you have um instagram as well i would say Sure. I think there's, there's a key thing there, Joni, as well with social about if, you, if you're doing post to notify that you're doing the CPD, um, if it's part of the RIBA CPD, obviously you get the use of the logos that, that um, mm -hmm. Joe mentioned to just, but if you're doing a social post with that, tag the MBS, ta tag the CPD providers network in it because you're then- And the RIBA. Get, yeah, the <laughs> RIBA, yeah. You, you get that um, mm -hmm. reach then of all of the followers, which I know MBS, we've, we've got probably over 11,000, yeah. I think just, just on LinkedIn alone. Um, so with Twitter, et cetera, it just expands that exponentially. So yeah, if a I great, could, great point. Yeah. Just to say on social right now, um, what we've been doing since lock, uh, lockdown first started last March um, is we are um, doing promotions of uh, any CPD providers who are delivering live remote CPD like this or who have it on demand. So don't forget that if you are signed up and you are doing it and you haven't told us yet, give us a shout and um my colleagues in nbs and i will do social posts on it as a as, as a courtesy um um at, with you tagged so that'll get you some more attention that'll get us some more um attention as well sure and then i think that eva um obviously you you've got experience as a manufacturer doing this How, what are your thoughts on on cpd acting as, as a brand awareness tool itself 
Um, well, I had, I had two thoughts really. One is probably more in my agency, um, on the agency side, that um, we hear now more and more from our clients that they sometimes struggle to get into or get an opportunity to present to a practice unless they have a CPD. Um, so a traditional presentation where they talk about their offering in instances that it's not welcome uh, anymore. Um, so I would say that offering CPD will give you another opportunity, perhaps an opportunity that you can't get um, to, grow your, uh, to, to grow your brand awareness. Uh, and then the second thing, just we were talking a little bit about that you can't sell and it can't be commercial in, in that sense. So we, we often say that when people say, well, I can't sell through a CPD, but you can sell, you can sell your expertise so yes, you're not selling your products, but you are selling your knowledge um, and your expertise. So that's just a, a different way of, of selling really, which I guess also um, helps with the brand awareness. Perfect, thanks very much. Um, so yeah, I think some great responses there. Hopefully everybody's is finding it useful. Um, I think what we should really discuss, and I think more importantly, um, this is probably going to be a little bit different this time this year than it probably was this time last year um, is why and how really CPD should form part of the, the integrated marketing strategy. Um, obviously today, the way we're doing things compared to how we were doing things at the beginning of last year is, is completely different. Um, but obviously it's something that that's been required for a long time and will continue to be required. Um, so yeah, I open that up to the floor um, and, Okay, I know you've obviously got a lot of experience in this, so um, w without sort of finger pointing to you first each time, if, if you want to start the conversation, I'd be more than happy for that to, that to go ahead. Absolutely, thanks, Lee. Um, integrated marketing with, with CPD, I think, if anything, it's, it's become even more to the, the forefront. Certainly before, before lockdown, um, then we were having demand for sort of the, the traditional type of CPD presentations and it was a little bit of a hard sell to get get people to then move it to an on-demand type of of video or or to to get more on onto a digital platform but the balance has has gone completely the other way now and I think what I'm tending to notice is that um, clients now who are um, working with us to produce CPD and not sort of seeing it as a standalone um, product as such. So they're looking at how do they actually shout about that online. So it might be that it's not just the CPD that we're involved in, it's, it's more the promotion of that, that particular function or the service. So we can be doing sort of promotional videos, the little clips that would be used on social media, for instance, writing social media posts that then point them back to their EBA CPD providers and the, the, the um, network, for instance, and as you said, Lee, with the hashtags, et cetera. Um, but making sure as well that, um, that it's all, all, that everything's joined up, even in, with the integ integrated strategy, particularly on digital now, um, that when the content that we've got keywords that are, are found within websites, for instance, that, um, and it all, all links together. So, and I'm sure, um, again, I'll pass over to Joe on, on content writing really, and, and Ava as well. Thank you, Kay. Um, yeah, just very much underlining what um, Kay says, it's all about having sort of a very coherent, thought out, joined up approach, sort of know what your key objectives are, know what your message is, your audience is, um, have clear positioning and then making sure that your CPD is part of that and you're reinforcing the rest of the messages that you've got elsewhere in your marketing portfolio. Um, you know, you have to be saying the same things or not necessarily exactly the same things, but talking about the same issues and have just, it, it just has to be coherent. You can't be doing one thing in your CPD and then another thing elsewhere because it just will feel a bit disjointed and it won't it won't help build that brand brand familiarity and it won't help drive drive the sales that you're in the end looking for um and i know um eva's probably got a lot of thoughts around this content specifics yeah um although it's kind of echoing i think what you what you guys just said um i think really that using cpds can for, for, for brands that aren't that familiar with content marketing 
um, CPD can actually be a good place to start because it is you know, it's purely content marketing. So, so you, we, we've seen that people use uh, to start with a CPD and then realize ah, it's this actually works for us to talk about the wider context rather than just our products and then roll that out and perhaps start a, a blog or start writing um, thought leadership um, articles for their website. So it's interesting how, how a CPD can be the beginning of a wider mm -hmm. um, content strategy as well. Let's just be absolutely clear that, um, and we've talked a lot about thought leadership and we really want to encourage that and think it adds some interesting flavor and texture to what's available, but your traditional specification related, product related CPD, you can talk about products, but in a generic way, rather than referring to them in brands, with their brands, with the reference numbers and, and with their um, product names, what you're talking about is that particular type of product, all the sort of specification information people might need to know, or a particular design um, issue related to that, that type of product case histories about that kind of product. So what we're trying to do, and I'll go into this later, is balancing the ability to tell your story about your product with the requirements that you're talking about your product in an educational way and a, and a fairly um, non-branded way. We've been doing this for like 25 years. And it, it, sometimes I think when you're new to this, it's difficult to balance those two ideas in your head, but it, it, do, it does work. You can tell your story. Obviously. But in, in the RIBAs, um, within the RIBAs framework, the other thing I'll say about the awareness is that once you do have REBA CPD accredited, don't forget to pay attention to the, to the description. Everything that is approved as part of the providers network is listed on rebacpd.com. It's where people go, specifiers go to find REBA accredited CPD. And you can do a lot with that description to talk about, to, to further raise awareness. So for example, are you offering um, live Zoom um, CPD at the moment? Mention that in your description. So anything that you might want to specify, specify your audience to know about you or your product um, in your CPD can be there. And it's getting that extra exposure. Good stuff. I think we, we'll, we'll come on to sort of the, the, the types of content within CPD in a little bit, but I think, yeah, the the live sort of situation where you would have took a PowerPoint in and, and, and blasted through it is, is probably going to happen again. It, it, no doubt people will want face to face, but I think we're going to see whatever the normality is after the, the lockdown potentially ends on the 21st of June as, as mm -hmm. a blended mix. People will still be working remotely and have, have learned that you can be way more efficient um, through through working remotely and, and having meetings that way. So um, you need to consider both and, and maybe building something up that can be applicable or delivered in both ways. Um, I think personally as well, I've, I've written CPDs in the past when I was a manufacturer and my, my concern was always if it was a thought leadership piece, um, is the sales team going to be able to deliver this and, and come across that they personally know the subject well? So there's obviously elements on training there. I think Eva, um, did, did you have any experience with, with similar things there as well? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yes, and it's really interesting because it's one of the, it's, it's, it usually falls um, within marketing, so it's usually a marketing team that initiates mm -hmm. the CPD, but it's, uh, it's quite unusual in a way that you're creating this marketing tool for the sales team to use, so it, it, by the end of it, it's a project that you're doing between two teams if you like which is quite unusual and can make it a little bit harder um so I, uh, in our experience involving the sales team the presenters really really early on uh, works and, and get them to feed into to the narrative um but of course you want to push them a little bit too to get them to to present something that's perhaps a little bit out of their ordinary um pitch so, so there's a, a give and take there, but it's a really interesting, that's why I really personally, personally like um, developing CBDs because it's an interesting dynamic between the two different teams um, and you need to make it work for both, for both sides really, which is possible. So yeah, I think on, on that, it, it obviously needs to form part of the sales strategy then as well as the marketing yeah. one. Um, Kay, I think I probably point, I point towards you on this one if you want to, want to pitch in on that. Yeah, uh, well, one of the things that we've found has worked particularly well as well, um, where we've been able to aid our manufacturers to do this, is to actually brief the sales team well beforehand so that they have the confidence. Um, don't just 
throw a CPD presentation at them with a script and say, off you go. Um, I think being able to, for them to be able to have maybe some additional material that's frequently asked questions or any, any points that they can perhaps run through with their colleagues before going and, and um, briefing architects gives them the confidence as well to, to run, to deliver that CPD content. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, people change within teams as well and, and the information changes. So A, keep the, the people who are delivering it up to date, um, but B, you know, don't just leave your CPD for the next five years and never revisit it. I think that's that's another another point there, which Joni... Joni well, well, actually, uh, according to the terms of the quality code, you should be updating it at least every two years. Yeah. And with the regularly changing regulatory environment we're all a part of right now, you probably want to look at it more frequently. And anyway, you don't want to get bored delivering something for five years, you know, over and over. You want it to be interesting to use so that interest will and enthusiasm will come across to your audiences. So. Sure, I think that that was a sort of the next sort of development in the question I was going to perhaps put to Joe is that obviously um, CPD content, as with any marketing and, and PR, I suppose, needs to be on point with, with what people are looking for and are interested in at the time. Um, I know going back, I got said, right, we, we needed CPD creating about BIM and it was like, oh God, how are we going to do this for to delivering it with the sales team? And I'm trying to explain something to a set of designers that probably know more about the subject than they do. But obviously there's a whole host of topics, sustainability, health and well-being, et cetera. Um, have you got any sort of advice on, on remaining current, I suppose, is probably a, a, the best way to put it. I mean, you know, obviously it's, you know, you've got your CPD, but you you can freshen up your introduction, like how you, you go into the topic. I'd say, you know, you're going to know what the key issues are. Um, I'd say, you know, a tip might be, you know, prompting the sales team. I'm sure they do this going through checking, you know, the practices, web feeds, um, the social feeds. What are they working on? You know, referring back to the, to their recent projects, you know, making it live, trying to make it relevant to them and sort of showing, you know, flattery is obviously a great way um, to build a rapport. So if you can flatter them that way. Um, and then I think it's sort of keeping an eye on the news gender, the bigger picture, you know, and being aware of, you know, following the sort of trade trade media and seeing what, you know, there's a lot of surveys done with specifiers, you know, demonstrating the challenges that they're facing. I know MBS does a number, um, RABA Journal does, um, AJ does, and seeing what are the problems facing practices now, and then bringing that in, you know, in some way to, to your introduction and conclusion, um, so that you can make sure that what you're saying is resonant and topical. Sure. I think on, on that note, I mean, this is obviously a little bit of a pitch with, with my MBS at home, but if, if you visit the MBS.com, we've been doing these webinars as well as educational pieces for the past 12 months, plus quite heavily. Um, and there's, there's some great content there that's really focused around sort of current and, and really sort of um, inspirational topics that, that people are wanting to hear about now. So yeah, look around you and, and, and take that from note. I think, Kay, I can see you've, you, you, you have you got some thoughts on, on this as well? Um, just echoing what, what everybody else has said. So. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, thank you. And Eva, obviously, um, looking at the, the gallery tour, um, obviously, that was something that, that was just, I think, really aesthetically mind blowing that, that would intrigue people to want to go as you would if you were visiting, I don't know, maybe a museum or an art gallery or something. Um, with regards to, to topics, if it was knowledge more than more than demonstrating something like that, have you got any sort of experience or thoughts to share where, where that's happened for you in the past? You mean how to select the, the topic? Yeah, yeah, what, what to do? Yeah, we, I would say you can either, and I think Joni has kind of mentioned this already, so maybe it's not really an either or situation, but there's, you can look at the traditional CPD where, where you're talking about how to specify your, your product, and it's more of a, a technical um, CPD. Um, and what we often try to do is to weave in a little bit of uh, thought leadership or a story um, to tell uh, th throughout that. So you can, you can even think about things that the architect, you, you need to always remember what the architect wants to know and what they don't know already. So you can't be patronizing, obviously. You can't 
teach them something they already know. Um, but for example, something that will really inspire them about your products um, that, that they might not know. Um, we've recently done one on patterns. Um, I shouldn't say too much, but on the, for a, a, a tiling manufacturer on tiling patterns and architects may think they know about tiling patterns, but we kind of added more content to it and talked a little bit about the mm -hmm. mathematics behind it. So, um, so I think you can, you can either go towards the kind of inspiring direction, still weaving in technical information that needs to be there, or perhaps if, if you, especially if you have a very technical product, you can of course stay within the, the technical um, theme. And one thing I would say is to get quotes and get you as a presenter need to breathe sometimes when you're presenting a CPD. So if you have a quote from an architect that you've worked with or a quote from a newspaper or a magazine um, or from a book from, you know, from a famous architect who's written a book on that topic, you can have that as a, as a, as a slide for you to drink some water um, and for the audience to just read that quote. It breaks it up and it just brings other people's voices into your story. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think with people reading things as well, particularly with online delivery, um, is, is make sure if you're trying to get people to stay engaged, is is maybe pause every so often to maybe have a quick fire round of questions or to recap mm -hmm. on on what's soon to make sure that people are are, are noting what you're doing. Um, yeah, great. Thanks very much. I think last question on on the CPD itself before um, I'll I'll ask Joni how how we can go about getting accredited is obviously for a lot of manufacturers, um, particularly of, of late those that may not be being um, as sort of fruitful as they might have been in the past with with the lockdown situation, etc. Return on investment is going to be a big big consideration with with any marketing spend. Um, how can we measure ROI through through CPD? Can we do that? Um, I think that's maybe something I'd, I'd like to put out to the panel. I have my own thoughts on that, which I can chip in with. But um, yeah, Kay, do you have any, any thoughts on this at all? Um, yeah, the, there's a few different ways, to be fair. And um, I think certainly even before before lockdown, um, one of the one of the things that um, that we've we've often said in, in terms of investment into CPD, and that's mainly the resource of writing, et cetera, and, and accreditation. Um, you've really only got to get probably one specification to pay for that investment. Um, but actually, it's about getting that architect to be the brand advocate for life, really, and, and it's about getting them to um, have your brand front of mind, because you don't only want that one spec, you want the number, perhaps the 10 specs they're doing that year, um, and the next five years or the next 10 years of them being an architect, that the, they are actually coming back to you for that CPD content. So you might not necessarily get the sale on the first presentation of, of that CPD, but you could well have 10 years worth of sale after that and that that is it's difficult to quantify but you know that's something that i've certainly always um put over it when in our experience of, of writing cpd yep joni i so you yeah you know, just a couple of things the first is that um if you're um in nbs products and reba cpd providers network speak to your nbs ac account manager about, about getting the analytics from the views on re your pages on rebacpd.com but but also, um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I'm really sorry. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let somebody else go. I'll talk to. You. I'll, I'll address it in a minute. I was completely distracted for a second. If I if I just oh, I know what it was. Sorry, sorry. Um, people are doing CPD. They're still doing CPD. The RIBA hasn't reduced its expectations, and people are doing live CPD. So pretty much, I think I mentioned before, since middle of March last year, we worked with hundreds upon hundreds of CPD providers to get them to pivot from in-house face-to-face to live generally, although also on-demand delivery. So people are doing the CPD, people are buying, people are specifying, people are asking questions, and you're still having that interaction. So just looked at some statistics less yesterday, indicated to me that um, there's not that many less fewer people consuming their content, CPD content in this way than if they were in a practice. So, you know, I think that, you know, the fact that people are still draw, um, designing, procuring and specifying 
you're just reaching them in a different way for now. I think in the future, when we're out of lockdown, you probably, we will, as we've said, always have this mix of live and face to face. Right. And obviously in a lockdown situation, you don't have the expense of buying the sandwiches. So um, <laughs> there's an extra bit of measurement there at the minute. Although to be had. some do. <laughs> I did see an offer the other day for a um, Greg's voucher for any, every attendee. <laughs> I won't mention who it was. So. I, I have heard somebody that sent pizzas to people, actually. So there is there are still options <laughs> there. Um, but yeah, the, we, we, we digress. Um, <laughs> Joe or Eva, have, have you got any, any thoughts on that before we, we move on? Yeah, I, I think just of building on that, obviously you can get the analytics from M MBS around sort of online attendees, mm -hmm. um, but it's also, you know, tracking that, making sure you capture that because, you know, as Kay said, there can be a gap between attending and specifying, you know, that can be quite a long journey um, and then on to purchase. Um, and then the other point is watching your other channels, you know, just, you know, have it, making sure you know what your um, follower numbers are before you you're, you start running your CPDs and then keeping an eye on you know seeing seeing as have have they gone up um tracking your google analytics making you know seeing are there increases in visitors so that in until you get to the sort of money metrics making sure you're capturing all the other metrics that you can um you know because they they can be powerful proof that you're boosting your brand awareness and the other thing it might be that you do a little bit of um, market research researching with specifiers have their awareness of your brand gone up before you started your cpd activity as well as your, your other marketing activity and has it you know has that changed so you, there are a number of ways to demonstrate the effectiveness and impact of what you're doing um until you get to that sale sure so keep capturing the data and, and making sure that you're monitoring that both internally and, and with the external tools that are provided perfect Ava, um anything else to, to add before before i move on to joni about getting accredited yeah just on the return on investment i would say that cpds are perhaps one of the easiest out of the the, the marketing mix one of the easiest um tools to to measure yes it might take a while before you get this get specified but you see please help you to it, it, it's a person gen, often it's a personal uh, relationship that kind of starts there because it is often a presentation um so and and that just makes it easier to measure because you as a presenter as a specification manager will hopefully continue talking and we'll see that specification come through eventually so you will know that it was your cpd presentation was part of that um process so, so I, I would say the CPDs. If if you have, uh, if if someone's putting pressure on you to to show their return on investment, I would say CPD is a good is a good marketing tool to to invest in. Stuff, and I think obviously going back to the the, the comments that that were previously mentioned in, in the presentation, um, is is how you can repurpose it. So if you think of the amount of time that you're going to maybe build up um, through creating content for your website or for literature, etc. You can repurpose what you're doing with the CPD and that. So there's obviously gains there as well. Thanks very much, everybody. So, um, yeah, Joni, I think that now would be a, a good time to maybe discuss the the benefits of mm. um, our IBA CPD, and then then we we can maybe have a little discussion on how we we can get accredited. Okay. Well, I mean, there are less tangible benefits, which I think our, our colleagues here could probably um tell you about but i think the literal benefits for a subscription are obviously the assessment of your cpd material so you get a number of, of allocations over your initial two-year contract or your renewal contract so the assessment of the material but also the um access to the our exclusive guidance and standards and priority support um, and one, that's one thing I really want to emphasize is that both um, the Reba team and the NBS team are always there to help and support you. And um, my team and I are always available to hear your ideas uh, um, and, and your concerns and your thoughts about what you're going to develop. And I think particularly if you want to talk about when this tricky issue of thought leadership CPD or anything else, we're there to help and guide you by um, a meeting, by email or by whatever. So you get access to the Reba CPD logos, which you can use um, once you're approved um, extensively in lots of ways. You get the help desks at both NBS and RIBA, exclusive invitations to forum and other events, news and information, the listing on rebacpd.com for every piece of your material listed separately, um, access to CPD Showcase, which is our monthly specifier newsletter. Um, and of course, um, as mentioned before, the use of the relevant Reba CPD logos. 
as an additional thing, if you've got approved content, you can also take part in the separate but linked Reba CPD Roadshow program. And finally, some of the less tangible ones are the association with the world's oldest professional body. We've been around since 1834. Um, we've got an international reputation and the association um, and the intellectual content and support of both us and our colleagues at the NBS as well. And finally, significant brand recognition, um, centering on the use of the logos and the recognition of those logos, which is something like 85, 90% brand recognition throughout the um, construction industry. So you get quite a lot in addition to the assessments and the hard work that you're gonna be putting into the assessments. You get access to us, to marketing support information and, and visibility as well. Okay. and. and, and going about getting accredited obviously um mbs have had the long-term partnership with with the riba and mm. it, it's actually mbs that can help facilitate that so if any manufacturers would would like to consider cpd um that might not be doing this previously if, if you could um, drop us a note at manufacturers at the mbs.com we'd, we'd be more than happy to speak to you um but then actually getting assessment and accreditation mm -hmm. Joni, do you want to talk through yeah, how, sure. how that happens for anybody that might not be in the know well, I guess the first thing is, is answer the question, what do we actually mean by accredited, quote unquote? It's simple. It's just about having your CPD material assessed and approved by the RIBA as part of the CPD Providers Network. And then for you to be able to signal that status to the construction industries, specifically, but not only architects, but other specifiers as well. So what we find is interior designers, um, building services engineers and facility managers, and some of the other professional bodies to a lesser degree are consumers of providers network. So what you're signaling is that you've been part of that rigorous process to ensure um, quality and clarity of your CPD material and thereby to um, advertise your presence and your brand and your association with us with our logos. So first of all, you become part of the providers network, you get access to the standards, guidance and support. But moreover, assuming that you are a product manufacturer, or supplier, a trade association, you want to tell your story and we want you to tell your story. However, in a post Grenfell world where content needs to lead to um, informed um, and safe specifications, we look for a number of things in your technical content, presuming it's not thought leadership. So we want content that's educational, that's not specifically um, branded sales oriented and isn't disguised sales or marketing. We also need the technical information that gives us the confidence that you're enabling those safe and informed specification decisions and that your content is going to reflect seven key specification areas and that is going to be clear, unambiguous information with all your claims and research evidenced and, and no holes in, in your content. So been able to do that and you have access to those standards and guidance when you subscribe. Um, we also have what I hope are very clear and fair processes to enable that um, and to enable the assessment of your material efficiently and fairly and clearly. So having credited content that meets RIBA standards and guidance gets you in front of specifiers and um, quickly we hope and, and thus able, able to establish that ROI equally quickly so finally, you, you, you've seen the standards, you've seen our requirements, you've seen what we want in terms of technical CPD. To be able to help you process that, we need to see a number of items. Um, say you're doing the traditional 40 minute PowerPoint presentation in house or live like this, we need to see a number of things in the assessment package um, to enable us to assess it fairly and accurately and clearly. And that would be, um, um, it sounds obvious, but it's not always the complete PowerPoint presentation without all videos working, without all illustrations in place, complete speakers notes rather than just bullet points. And the reason for that is that it enables us to tell when you're talking about what you're saying about the technical issues related to your product, but it also lets us tell that whether or not you're lapsing into sales talk. Um, we also need to see there's a submission form you fill out to help guide us and the CPD assessor and any handouts that you think are relevant. So basically we need to see the full assessment package, um, albeit there's lots of other content that people can provide other types of content. Most people want to do the 40 minute PowerPoint presentation like this. Once you're approved, you're assigned at least one of the 10 mandatory core CPD topics 
and then that's listed on rebusipedia.com. So not only architects, but other specifiers who are looking for con content in one of those particular areas um, will know to go to rebusipedia.com and hope and they'll find you and they'll book the seminar. Um, at the moment, we're giving lots of handholding and lots of advice, particularly when everybody's tr trying to negotiate this switch to digital what what's i guess everybody probably agrees that one of the only silver linings in this pandemic has been the acceleration of technology and the acceleration of of all kinds of organizations but manufacturers as well embracing digital technology and and it really has for one thing and accelerated the availability of cpd not just with your specifiers in regional centers in the UK, but globally, but also reaching people you may not have been able to reach before um, much more efficiently. Um, as we've all said, as Lee and I have said, I don't think we're going to go back to solely face to face. I don't think the future is solely digital either. But I think finally, after many, many, many years of trying to get you guys to deliver digital content, you're delivering it now. And it's really great. You didn't have to have expensive uh, developers do it. You didn't have to um, get a postgraduate qualification in developing online learning. You just started doing it. And it's been really great to see that um, hundreds and hundreds of manufacturers have sort of taken the jump and, and pivoted. But the, in a nutshell, what we're talking about is standards and processes and provided everything's there and, and we're satisfied with what you've sent us. You, you can be approved, accredited, as it were. Sure. So, yeah, the, the, the guidance is available um, to, to, to you once you sign up and, it, and it's easy to sort of follow through. Um, obviously, th th not every manufacturer or, or vendor supplier is going to have um, maybe the resource to, to actually give somebody the full time to, to implement in that. Are there any avenues, options? And maybe this goes out to Kay or, or somebody for manufacturers that are considering getting somebody to assist them in writing their CPD externally. Um, yes. <laughs> Give us a call. <laughs> Two, <three. laughs> any, one of us. Um, any anybody on the call. But um, what I, what I would say is, is yes. I mean, quite a lot of um, probably what myself, Joe, and Ava. I'll be I'll be fair and and divvy it, it, it through. Um, what we do do is we help provide that link between um, the product manufacturer and allowing them to get on with their own day to day business requirements yet achieving them to come to market sooner with the CPD and their sales force to be able to deliver in, in some format. And we can also help advise and guide because we're used to doing this. We're used to working with Joni and the team and we understand, you know, the requirements of um, putting that assessment material together and the whole, you know, the assessment submission. And then thereafter, any feedback that comes back from the assessors, um, making sure that that content's correct to go back in if need be. Um, but Joni and the team are, are very, very approachable and, and very hugely knowledgeable and will always help help the manufacturers. We, we step in, I suppose, where the resource is tighter at that end and can, we can help facilitate that process um, and hopefully make it easier to, to come to market with the CPD. Thanks, Kay. I mean, that, that was a really sort of perfectly generic response there and, and not just <laughs> focusing solely on your own business. So I'm, I'm sure Joe and Eva are really grateful for that. Joe and Eva, um, on that basis, is there anything you want to add, add into that before we move on? Um, maybe just one point that we also, uh, um, well, I echo everything the case said. Thank you, Kay. Uh, but, but we also understand what architects, um, what specifies want what they are interested in and sometimes you need perhaps someone external to help you suss out what what in our story or in our offering would be of interest to the architect yeah. um, and we all talk to architects and and we do a lot of presenting we often test run our cbds in front of a group of architects um, so so that might maybe you don't need help with the whole CPD or maybe you do but to just have someone external to talk to about the the topic and and the audience what does the audience audience want um is also useful I would say right so th there's there's obviously th there's that external help there which has got the perspective of the person that is going to be receiving the content and also people have got the experience of writing this content over a number of years to know what to look for to understand whether it's going to be successful and deliverable or not 
Good stuff. Um, I think very, very quickly, um, the, the types of content we're receiving was going to be the sort of the last question I was going to ask, but we've, mm -hmm. we've, we've covered quite a lot on digital delivery. We've spoken about um, tours where people have, have done things like mm -hmm. Rocker, and I know we've got some where people have done factory tours. Um, very quickly, Joni, I think, have, have we got anything mm -hmm. else that stand out in like blog posts or something like that? that well, yeah, definitely. People are doing, people are turning their blogs, their thought leadership, their blogs into CPD. Um, we just had a uh, podcast series approved recently. Um, factory tours, I saw that there was a question that popped up and I thought they'd use this opportunity to answer it. Um, factory tours are being turned into virtual factory tours or virtual reality factory tours. So an answer to the question that I saw popping up is that you could, you know, do one live that as you do, do with your regular CPD, you can do it live face to face, you can do it virtual or you can do it virtual reality. So those sorts of things, um, interesting little quirks of things. Um, you've probably heard two, I mentioned this again, 299 Lighting, who um, want to talk about some new regulations relating to emergency lighting, but didn't want to do another yet another technical presentation. So it's turned it into a sort of murder mystery presentation which was highly participative and, and got a lot of engagement and enjoyment. So we can assess almost anything that you can submit, whether it's written, whether it's digital, whether it's face to face um, and of any length. So starting with 30 minute podcast or piece of micro learning to something much longer, if need be. Um, think about, again, the thought leadership and think about the technical side. Uh, or just think about things that you would be fun and enjoyable with you would find fun and enjoyable yourself. You know, if you if you enjoy something, I think that's going to transmit to the audiences. Yeah, sure. I think that, like you mentioned about the virtual tours as well, at, at the moment, that's that's something that we've seen quite a lot of focus on. I think since the lockdown in particular, um, there's a company called Matterport that do the, the 3D scanning of buildings, and I'm sure there are probably <laughs> other providers of, of the solutions mm -hmm. that, that can do that. Um, but everybody and anybody from restaurant booking a table right through to, I, I mm -hmm. live right around the corner from Litchfield Cathedral, and they've obviously had a drastic reduction in, in people going through the doors and obviously putting money in the charity box there. So they've done that virtually, and, and you can actually mm -hmm and do this there's, there's nothing stopping you as a manufacturer using this digital technology to actually deliver in, in that sense as well i suppose no absolutely perfect so that, uh, that's that's one of the panel questions answered i think <laughs> Joni, did, did you want to finish what you were going to say then sorry um no i'm maybe i i you know i'm older myself so uh, forgive me for this but ask the number younger tech team members at your um organization what they think what they could help you come up with as well Good. They'd probably be delighted to do something um, a little bit different to help um, get your um, brand out there. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we're just going to take a few questions from the panel now. We, we've had quite a high number, so I, I don't think we're going to be able to get through all of them. But as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we will respond to everybody um, separately by email afterwards if we don't get around to yours. Um, we've already answered a couple, um, but yeah, we'll go through them. I think probably one here that, that's quite prominent, and we do get asked this quite a lot, is do we have any recommendations on how to follow up with attendees um, post CPD and um, how do you pitch yourself and your company more following that? I'd like anybody that obviously this is the panel question, so I can't necessarily direct these to, to um, anybody. Thank you. Thanking them for their time, you know, always, yep. always goes down well. Um, you know, it, it can be digitally, so email. Um, if you've formed a particular rapport with someone, you might want to reach out to them on LinkedIn. Um, you know, or a lot of architects are very active users on Instagram. That might be another route to establish that connection. Um, I think it's be natural, be human. Um, you know, if you did, you know, see, make a connection and there was something you talked about, I guess, refer back to that. And if there's a natural way, you know, you can always follow up saying, you know, if you are interested, here's some further links. Um, and then, you know, leave it to them and, have you know establish a natural dialogue i mean you know these presentations are being given by salespeople. i mean I, i'm a bit hesitant to step on their toes but you know this isn't you know they're naturally going to be amazing at this and it's what they do every day i, I think it's be do what you do and be confident never 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 just do it and not follow up always always follow up even if it's immediately after the formal part of the presentation that's been assessed always use that opportunity Good stuff, good stuff. Is, okay. is there any sort of timescales, I suppose, between following up with emails and things that, that would maybe 
deemed etiquette to, to, to do that or is it just a case of you've got to deal with each case one by one oh, what do you think Eva in terms of timing I think um probably gauge each each situation like Joe was saying if, if you know someone or if, if you feel that there's something to continue a conversation on then go ahead and do it straight away but I, I was gonna say that we have had people ask us and never send the presentation because people don't want a huge file sent to them like that but do prepare something perhaps your last summary slide or perhaps a nice pdf with further reading or some key points from the cpd um or something really interesting that kind of continues the conversation after the cpd um, so prepare that in advance as a pdf um, that you can attach and send out and it gives you a reason to to email again afterwards so rather than sending the presentation do one more thing do add something to your cpd pack um as a pdf that you can send out after maybe something like a digital handout sort of flyer mm -hmm. type type thing yeah, at the end, yeah even if it's just thank you for attending and here are our contact details or it could be something simple but just so you have something prepared mm -hmm. So I think think on that note, Joni, do do we get feedback from the um, people that are actually sitting and attending the CPD? Well, that's on, on a good question. Delivered? That is a really good question because when you subscribe, you should be telling us um, when you've got something booked. Um, and the reason for that, there are several reasons for that. One is that it allows us to do quality checking amongst the delegates, ask them the questions, ask them what they thought, and we give that feedback back to you. If we don't know you've got something booked, we can't give you the feedback. The second thing is it allows us to um, spot check once in a while. So we go in with your presentation and make sure that everything's okay, that you can answer questions and so forth. But it also allows us to keep track of, of numbers for marketing purposes, both for you at decision time, when you come to renewal, you have to talk to your board, and for us as well in terms of marketing. So we do give feedback when we get it. Um, our colleagues at NBS sent feedback forms on a regular basis. We've just um, converted to, I think, a survey monkey type um, feedback mechanism, which makes it a lot easier. So you tell us where you are when you're going to be, and hopefully we'll be able to give you the feedback. But if you don't tell us, we won't be able to. Good. Thanks very much. Um, another question we've got. Oh, sorry, Kay, do you want to pitch in? <laughs> Yeah, so just I, I suppose just to to jump in there on the um, you know how to follow up type thing. It's we we started off this conversation an hour ago or whatever about brand awareness and staying front of mind. Um, so it's it's not just about how they've really got on with that particular delivery of that CPD session. I think that's great. Yes, absolutely. Follow up. What did you like? What did you enjoy? What what might you have coming along in the future? And as, as Joe says, the sales team are generally that's that's their you know, that's what they do. Um, but I'd also say that's an open door now. That's a, that is a lead and that's that's something that can be built into um, a regular follow up every few months or you know I, we have another CPD on such and such. Um, and so cross-selling some of the, the other CPD seminars is, is potentially also, um, they are a target for that as well. So that was just something I wanted to throw in. Great, thanks very much, Kay. Um, we've had one question that, that's asking, um, obviously a lot of specifiers will have trusted relationships with, with various manufacturers already. If it is somebody that's competing with one of those manufacturers, um, how can they use CPD to, to approach and potentially start to be considered as, as specification instead of um, their existing sort of supplier? Um, I think personally, this goes back into some of the comments we've made earlier about making the the CPD interesting and, and knowledgeable, but as, does anybody have any suggestions on that? I think it's yeah. yeah I'd, I'd say that this is this is like the the challenge of marketing. This is the sort of the challenge that we get faced all the time with our clients. You know, they have competitors that are bigger, more more well known than what they do. Um, I think it's about doing something different. Don't follow the crowd. Stand out. Be different. Um, the example of the murder mystery CPD. I thought that was amazing. I thought that, you know, that would definitely achieve cut through. Um, and, you know, the more different you are, the more like you are to inspire. And, you know, we're, we're targeting very creative people. So let's use that to our advantage. And also don't forget that the um, 
you're building up a long term relationship with everybody in the room and some of those people may go on to form their own practices or work elsewhere. And they'll be in a um, position um, at, at another time to think about specifying you. So don't just form the relationship with the practice, form the relationship with, with the people in the practice as well. And I think somebody mentioned on LinkedIn as well. And you know, this this addresses another question that just popped up. Uh, make how do we ensure we're getting decision makers in the room? You may not always get those those top decision makers in the room, but often those decision makers, not the people who are making those um, specific specification decisions anyway. And sometimes the younger people in the room will have a lot of influence over what um, um, gets specified and, and will go on to form their own practice ultimately anyway. So you have that relationship with them. Great. That's and great. They're the future leaders of tomorrow. Mm. You know, you want to get in get in at the beginning so that you've got their whole career ahead. This is it. So people remember, remember, <laughs> and, and, and these are long standing careers. People aren't going to spend seven years getting educated, qualified to, to want to just jump ship straight away. So yeah, yeah. great, great, very valid point. Um, we have had a question about CPDs being updated. Um, I know this one gets gets asked quite often at different CPD um, sessions, etc. But Joni, can you just advise? Do these need to be reapproved, um, or what's the um, process? It, somebody it depends them? on how it depends on how much content is is um, being updated. If it's just light um, updating of visuals and imagery, we're not that concerned about it. And if it's less than fifty percent of the content has been updated, we we can usually look at it in house. If it's a fundamental change um, where it's practically a new piece of CPD, and that's sometimes going to be necessitated by, particularly, for example, if you're cladding manufacturing, you're trying to keep up to date with the latest building regulations and legislative changes, and that would probably be, be full assessment. The best thing is to reach out to us as soon as you're thinking of updating us and, and have a talk with my team and, and see um, what you need to do or what your thoughts are. You do need to keep it updated, particularly um, when you're referring to any legislation or regulations that might change as well, and to keep it exciting for you. Good stuff. Um, we've had another question as well, which I think is going to be applicable to a lot of people. If somebody has a small sales team, um, but a large area and potential client mm -hmm. base to cover, they maybe can't necessarily afford that um, time mm -hmm. to spend 40 minutes delivering a presentation mm -hmm. to every single mm -hmm. practice that might want that. Do we have any recommendations on different types of content that they could maybe deliver or how they could, could perhaps get around that challenge? I think okay. it's perhaps less content than um bringing people together don't feel that you have to just deliver to individuals or individual practices you can bring those practices together i mean you might use the cpd roadshow program to do that or you could do it yourself i think a lot of pro um, providers right now are making their um, cpd available to the general architectural audience by um, issuing general invitations so you're, so you're bringing them together and when we're back in a face-to-face -face situation Lots of CPD providers um, have always um, say hired, use their showroom, use their their factory, used um, an, a third party venue to bring lots of practices together in one place. Provide maybe a glass of wine or a bacon buddy, or depending on the time of day. Both at ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We know where you're heading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, did, I, I noticed you you were looking to, to answer oh, that yeah, one. I think I'm as well. Going to leap in there with um, the fact that we are doing things remotely now, and it's it's you know this digital world at the moment. The fact that you you can translate your um, what would have been a traditional PowerPoint type CPD to um, an on demand video and um, that's something that we're, we're doing for a lot of manufacturers at the moment um, but also delivering through webinars zoom um, and it, it allows it also to be interactive remotely as, as we as we can see from today you know that's um, mm. that's another way that um, that we can be delivering cpd so i think if anything this the lockdown has shown us that it's not just about um, specific, specific, specification, that's easy for me to say, um, <laughs> sales force going out on the road and, and making sure that they're seeing one or two architectural practices, you can actually reach a, a bigger audience, um, probably more cost effectively in, in the type of format that we're delivering nowadays. At different yeah. times as well. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 on, on demand, and also recording these types of sessions, which. Mm -hmm. I think this, this, that's a really great point. I mean, obviously with the webinars and we've seen people delivering CPD in a webinar scenario where, like Joni mentioned, just they're inviting bulk people to come in and sit and listen to the CPD from different practices, et cetera. Um, a lot of people will sign up to webinars, for example, and then have the expectation that it's going to be available on demand. So whilst you might have a thousand signups, you might only have 200 attend on the day. The mm. rest of these people will slowly pick up at later points. So mm. we'll always factor that in. And it's, um, yeah, it's a great workaround for people with small teams in particular. Um, I think we've got time for one more question and then I'm going to wrap up. Um, Joni, I think this, this is probably more for yourself. Um, can a piece of CPD material be attributed to more than one part of the RIBA core curriculum? It depends on the content. I mean, because um, our general rule of thumb is that you would really only get meaningful education on any topic if you spend around a half hour on that topic. So I think most content that we assign one or two topics to, but again, I mean, it, it, dep it depends on what you, you're doing and, and what the theme is. We can always have a discussion about that, but for a 40 minute an hour presentation really the rule of thumb would be two topics at most if something's a little bit longer you might be able to do a third one but i think that um we don't really consider that people can really meaningful learn anything technically in in less than half an hour although i i've been proven wrong before so for example podcasts might be 15 minutes to a half hour long they'd probably be assigned to a single topic it's it's more about time than as much about time as content. Great, thanks very much. So yeah, the, I think the answer to that question simply is yes, it can be, but it also depends on on the on the topic. That's a better, clearer way of putting it. Yeah, no, no problem. Well, on on that note, um, I'm I'm just going to wrap up and then and do my thank yous. Um, firstly, thank you everybody that's attended um, as listeners today. Um, obviously, we hope you've um, all appreciated it and if anybody has any questions around cpd please ping them in the chat now or, or follow up with us um, you can either contact mbs at manufacturers at the mbs.com or feel free to contact any of the other team joe k or eva um, that are on the call today with any questions for their assistance um, so yeah in summary um, cpd is is obviously something that's still in high demand it's not gone away because of anything such as pandemic if anything it's just evolved and become more digital and people are requiring this in different formats and there's a lot of manufacturing factors that are embracing this in different ways. Um, importantly, I think we've highlighted that the thought leadership piece needs to be really considered with it. But on that note, you can reattribute existing knowledge or um, data, etc., that you already have, or you can reuse the CPD material to, to formulate um, other parts of your, your marketing and sales strategy, such as your website, etc. Um, so getting that return of investment opens up a whole different um, sort of series of, of opportunities there um, for how you can, can do this to your own efficiencies. Um, but uh, importantly, CPD um, itself does need to form part of the, the marketing strategy and also the sales strategy. Again, if you have any further questions, feel free to drop us a note. But um, on that, I think I'm going to wrap up and I'd like to say thank you to Joni. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to Joe. Thank you to Kay and thank you to Eva. And I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you at the next session. Thank you. Thank you much. to Lee. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Take Bye care, everybody. Take care.